Next presenters are Jeff Polhammer and Charles Smith uh, presenting the uh, REN NM profile for trial implementation. So, Jeff and Charles, take it away. Hello, everybody. So, we're going to talk about the uh, radiation exposure monitoring for nuclear medicine profile, also known as REM and M. Okay. So, we're going to talk a little bit of history. The uh, REM and M profile builds heavily on uh, infrastructure and concepts from the REM profile. So, we'll talk a little bit about that. We'll talk of some of the new features that REM and M brings in. Uh, Charles is going to go through some of the use cases. And in particular, since this profile was actually um, uh, moved to trial implementation last year, it was uh, tested at the European Connect Connectathon, and Charles was involved with that. So he's going to tell some of the experience from that as well. So as we said, we have a, this is a uh, new profile, REM and M, built upon the REM profile. The purpose of it is uh, to support recording and reporting administered activity uh, due to radiopharmaceutical administrations. So similar to x-rays, but uh, doing the uh, radiopharmaceutical PET spec nuclear medicine procedures. Uh, one of the other side advantages of uh, implementing this profile is that it also allows us to automate the transmission of information about what was administered to the patient from the hot lab systems where that is done into the scanners. Uh, the PET and nuclear medicine image IODs require uh, some information about the radiopharmaceutical, the dosage that was administered, and some other parameters, and in many or most institutions that employs a sneaker net of some sort at this point uh, as the operator has to manually re-enter uh, some of this information. So within rem &M, we have the mechanism to automate that process as well. Um, as we said, there already is the REM profile, which uh, deals with X-ray dose information. Um, it's based on uh, DICOM structure reports, and there's a specific template for X-ray dose. Um, this was introduced around 2009, and as far as I know, all CT systems uh, from about 2013, 2013 on have supported uh, this profile. So there's a lot of infrastructure in place in uh, institutions for dealing with dose report information. So this is the actor diagram from that REM profile. Um, briefly, so we notice down in the lower left, that's the CT scanner, the acquisition modality. And in this profile, obviously, that is the source of the dose that's being uh, imparted to the patient. So the scanner does the imaging and creates the reports and sends those off to uh, an image archive image manager uh, using a uh, RAD62 store dose uh, information transaction, for example. From there, uh, there are other consumers that may want to read those reports, um, collect and do some analysis on them into trending reports, for example, for a department or for particular types of procedures. And this profile also includes the, the uh, idea that there might be registries uh, outside of uh, the institutions, for example, maybe professional institutions that set up registries to collect and analyze dose information from many institutions and do trending and recommendations based on that information. So in implementing REM and M, we wanted to make reuse of as much of this infrastructure and, and uh, transactions as we could uh, in order to make implementation easy and to piggyback on what was already out there. There. So, uh, looking at the REM and M profile, um, there's a couple reasons for doing this. One is regulatory bodies that are already um, regulating X ray dose are also looking at uh, other dose that's imparted to the patient. Uh, we also have professional societies that, for a number of reasons, are uh, looking at uh, procedures in, in the institutions, looking at the types of dosing being done, making recommendations on how to do that uh, in order to improve not only uh, 
dosed and uh, to the patients, but also improving image quality. Um, the images in PET and nuclear medicine are very dependent on accurate dose information, uh, as we have to do uh, correct for decays and flow of that, that uh, dose throughout the patient. So knowing exactly what was administered is key to getting uh, good images out. So for example, uh, American Society of Nuclear Cardiology already has a big uh, uh, activity called Image Guide where they're making recommendations about every kind of procedure, uh, how they should be done, uh, what kind of doses can be used. So this plays right into that as, in terms of being able to report and track uh, nuclear dose. Uh, we also have groups like Kiba from RSNA that are looking at image quality issues and making recommendations about uh, uh, dose in PET images, for example. So in 2013, DICOM added the structured report uh, that is used in the RevNM profile to uh, support uh, reporting this dose information. So Remedum, uh provides a framework for managing the reporting of this uh, administered dose. Uh, it can be used for PET imaging procedures, uh, general nuclear medicine, so often known as uh, just NM or SPECT, and even in procedures that don't actually involve an image at all, uh, there are, uh, can be supported in this profile. And as I said, the intent, and I think we, we uh, succeeded, is that this profile, uh, we tried to leverage as much of the infrastructure, the actors, and the roles as already existed in the REM profile. Uh, and as I mentioned, it's one of the other benefits is it's going to help us promote quantitative imaging because we can provide a very accurate activity and time information into the imaging uh, chain in the, in the scanners. So if we look at the uh, actor diagram for this profile, um, this is what it looks like. Everything above, above the blue line is identical to what we saw in the REM profile. So all of those actors do the same things. The only difference is they're looking at the structure report for the radiopharmaceutical instead of the x-ray administered dose. But their roles are exactly the same. The differences are below the line. Uh, in the lower left where we saw the CT scanner before, we have a new actor called the radiopharmaceutical activity supplier. Uh, the reason we do this is because the scanner is not the one imparting the radiation to the patient anymore. It's a hot lab or an injector system. So that would be this uh, activity supplier, RAS, we call it. The modality is moved over to the lower right. It is essentially just another consumer of those reports. So it goes off to the archive and pulls up the reports uh, that were just transmitted from the RAS to get the dose information that it needs for the imaging procedure that is going on. We've added one more actor here, and that is the uh, what we commonly call the HIS-RIS system or the DSS order filler. Both the acquisition modality and the radiopharmaceutical activity supplier go there to get information about the patients being processed. So we get the study information the patient name and that sort of information so that they are common to the images created on yeah. the acquisition modality and what's in the dose report. Um, so I'm going to let uh, Charles, I think I heard him come online there, I'm going to let him take over here. If you want, I can continue to do in the slides, but... Uh. Oh. oh, great job, Jeff. Thank you. Uh, you can just keep keep the slides going. Um, okay. So, um, I'll go over the high-level requirements and then go through the most common use case here. So, uh, the modality of the RAS, um, one of the things, like Jeff mentioned, was the, uh, along with the activity that's important to note and move to the gantry is because these are decaying uh, time, so we introduced a consistent time for uh, both the RAS, the reporter, RAS, and the modality. So um, when the ejection is reported in the time or the measurement of the activity of the dose is recorded, the camera is in the same relative time. And then also, as Jeff pointed out, the work list so that 
the reports that are generated from the RAS um, match up in the same study uh, downstream on the uh, in the modality or in the packs, so it can be grouped together. And obviously, this makes a lot of sense since uh, with PET CT and SPEC CT systems, um, the CT side of those systems have been reporting REM, and now they can have a matching uh, REM and M uh, image or uh, report that goes along with the images. So um, we're going to just cover the, the main, most common use case, the general imaging procedure, the documentation. Uh, and IHE uh, illustrates these other use cases, but for uh, for time's sake, we'll just do the most common, which I think will cover most things. Okay, you want to go to the next slide, Jeff? Okay. <clears throat> so the general imaging procedure, the one we're going to cover, um, is a typical workflow for liquid medicine where the patient um, enters the department. Um, patient demographics are uh, have already been entered into the HIST risk. Uh, um, that patient's found uh, a range of pharmaceuticals administered to the patient. Um, the RAS we report the activity, like it says. Then usually they go through. The patient has a what we call uptake time, where the rate of pharmaceutical is being um, flows through the body. This, Typically, it's around 40 minutes before they're actually brought to the scanner. Um, so, in this, in that time, the, the, the dose has been administered to the patient. The report can be sent up to the PACs, and we'll see this in the next workflow uh, diagram. So, if you want to go to the next slide, Jeff. So, starting on the left, we have the uh, order filler. Uh, the minister uh, next one in as the technologist, the nuclear medicine technologist in this case. Um, the middle block represents the radio pharmaceutical activity supplier, the RAS. Um, the modality is the fourth block from left to right. And then finally, the image archive is what we're, uh, we're ending this uh, just for this talk, the, uh, the workflow. So it's typical the order filler receives an order. Um, then the patient arrives, and the, and the RAS goes ahead and queries and retrieves the work list information, very much like it, uh, modality. And now knows the patient demographics. Um, the technologist then administers the radio pharmaceutical, um, and then that time is entered, and the amount of activity is computed at that time um, for that patient. And then the report can be created and sent uh, to the image archive, which is uh, the store activity RAD 110. So then we're, now we're into this period of uptake. The patient uh, for PET systems may be in a room that's dim light, so they're not to reduce the uh, stress on the patient, which may affect their studies. Um, the camera is being prepped, collimator can be set, patient's finished. So the uptake time is finished. The patient um, arrives at the modality. The technologist, again, queries the work list for the modality, so it, it has the patient's demographic. It can then use that study UID from the work list to go query the image archive to retrieve the, the dose information, the query dose information the RAD64 from the archive, and then adds, takes that report, adds in um, the information such as the event UID that the RAS has created in the report can be entered into the system, and also what radio pharmaceutical, the amount of activity, what time is all digitally recorded into the, into the scanner, where uh, at, now they're doing that manually, uh, like Jeff mentioned with with sneaker net. Then they can now perform the study um, <clears throat> and they can reconstruct um, and then store the images back to the image archive. 
in the Immigrant Archive would have the dose report, what was happening when uh, at the acti when the activity was administered to the patient, and the uh, the images are all in the same study set in the Image Archive. So I think that finishes this slide, Jeff. So we didn't uh, include, but uh, from then on, we uh, a dose information reporter could could pull the information from the PACs, um, provide reports about the rate of pharmaceuticals, uh, the amount of activity, the dose to the patient, and then it, it could um, anonymize those reports and forward those up into a dose registry for uh, national or similar to um, as next Im image guide where they want to uh, provide guidance back to the department on how their dose or activity administered to the patient compares to other departments, which is always very helpful information. So go to the next slide, I guess. So as I said, uh, information helps with department quality control process control, and then um, it can, it, you can add into the, uh, the amount of activity in organ dose, so you can estimate impact um, to the patients uh, and to the fetus here to determine. Um, so next slide, please. And here's some, as I mentioned before, some of the registry uses for population dose and indicators. Um, Dose reference levels um, to get a as sometimes um, rate of pharmaceuticals have been out for a number of years. Their um, activity that they were used 20 years ago have been greatly reduced, so they can start establishing new um, benchmarks and dose reference um, helps with patients. Just very similar to uh, the REM profile uh, clinical trials. And, uh, and longitudinal patient dose records. So uh, hot lab managers have been recording patient dose for a number of years, but that information has always been contained in the hot lab. And uh, the REM and M profile now is, allows that information to be viewed and throughout the enterprise. Okay, yes, next slide, Jeff. So uh, quickly to review what uh, we were able to accomplish in Venice uh, back in April. Um, we had a, a RAS that was, was there. We brought a RAS there. Um, we had uh, two uh, image archives that signed up to support the REM and M profile. Um, there were some others that we were able to work unofficially because they didn't register to, to be able to store the the REM and M uh, reports. And then there was a modality was able to that was there. They were able to pull the um, REM and M reports from the image archive and simulate an acquisition. And then there were a couple of those consumers um, that participated, and one was able to complete the profile um, and uh, <clears throat> show that they. We're able to read the dose um, and activity that was administered to the patient, the correct rate of pharmaceuticals there, and the correct activity um, was there. And uh, we tested not just this workflow, but um, some of the other workflows as well. So it was a good, good first uh, connect about, I think. So that's it. So um, some next step. Would be to um, you know have more vendors uh, implement the the, the profile, um, continue to participate in the connected funds, and then raise awareness. So we've done some work with this where we have um, some research places um, looking into publishing papers about how this the profile and implementing uh, improves quantitation and patient management and uh, image quality. So that will help where uh, 
raise awareness for the customers. And, uh, and we're working with the dose registries to bring uh, run by them and profile, make them aware, and uh, you know, obviously raise awareness of the standard. 